Hey there, I'm Alan Matthews and I am surrounded by stuff. And what is this stuff? These are mirrors. And we're gonna talk about how to use mirrors in your classical guitar practice to make sure that you're doing the things that you think you're doing and to identify things that you may not know you're doing. So to begin with, we have a big mirror here. And so one of the ways that you can uh, get some feedback on your practice Am I actually doing the things that I want to do? I have these ideas of how my hand should move, but are they actually moving like that when I'm playing? Am I lifting up my shoulder really big like this when I play and not realize it? Or am I creeping back toward, really far back toward the bridge when I play? These are, these are things that you might not realize that you're doing in the moment because we only have so much bandwidth to, to work with. And so whenever we're thinking about what's the next note, what's the next chord, what's my right hand fingering, all these things, it's really difficult to keep track of all this other stuff as well. So what a mirror can do is just give us a reminder and a feedback on our bodily position. A big mirror is really good for that. So as you're sitting here, you may just keep an eye on things just off the corner of your, you know, out of the corner of your eye, or you could specifically work with a mirror, sit right in front of it and and play. If you get distracted by your own face, then you can just make sure that the mirror just cuts off your head so that you don't sit there and make doggy eyes at yourself the entire time. I had a practice room once that was completely lined in mirrors. It was a ton of these big mirrors hanging on the walls, put in the corners and everywhere. It was great because I was everywhere. But seriously, it is really beneficial to be able to see what's going on. One of the things too that you can use mirrors for is to get out of the habit of craning your neck around looking at, at your guitar neck. So you can actually sit up straight and feel what it feels like to sit up straight and still play and be able to look right there and see your fingers back. And yes, it's weird at first, but you do get used to it fairly quickly and you can just notice, oh, I think I'm doing this with my wrist, but actually I'm doing this. Video is also really good for this, but this gives you more real time feedback. Another thing I used uh, uh, big mirrors for, for quite a while was that I kept seeing pictures of myself playing and I'd be playing like the most beautiful little piece and I would look like this. It was, had a lot of facial tension. And so then what I would do would be to sit there in front of the mirror and just <laughs> loosen up my lips, try to play something and just watch my face and to see if, okay, where is my tension coming in? And so that was just a practice to just to reduce that a little bit. I'm not saying that you can't use any facial tension whatsoever, but I, I had an excess and so I used it to work on it. Another mirror you can use is a little bitty mirror and just throw it onto your stand. You could use a little crusty old 1957 mirror like this one, or you could use any kind, you could keep a nice beautiful little mirror in your practice space, throw it on your stand and then just point it at a particular spot, such as your left hand or your right hand or something like that, just to see what's going on. You can just do this with your scales or with an entire piece or anything that you're working on. It's just a different perspective and it draws your attention to some aspect of something that you're working on. So when you use it intentionally, then you can, you can really spot check some things and say, oh, in this piece where I have to go up here, I'm, I'm doing this and I didn't mean to. So really useful, the mirrors. Have fun with that. I'll talk to you soon.